welcome. You're watching Medically Speaking and I'm Anakshi Upreti. With me, Dr. Padma Srivastav. She is the HOD of uh, the Neuro Department of the Elite Aims Institute from the National Capital. Thank you, ma'am, once again for joining us on NewsX. Ma'am, you know the topic. The burning issue right now, Omicron variant. How much do we need to worry? We have two cases which have been found in India. The first case, one of the cases is a doctor who's had no foreign contact, who's had, who's had no history of foreign travel. What does that mean? Does it mean that Omicron is already in India, that uh, perhaps it's possible it could have already spread? Or is it too early to uh, press the panic button, ma'am? Thank you, Minakshi. I think it is now three cases. I have uh, just heard that the third case uh, has been turned uh, Omicron uh, positive in Gujarat from, again, an international travel. Uh, so these cases are bound to come up. Now, as regards the positivity in a person who did not have a travel history, that's a concern that you have raised. Now, we also know that uh, there's been, also from the WHO, that this variant is about three times more infectious. So it certainly seems to have a precedence in terms of infectivity over and above the Delta variant. So obviously, when there is a contact with an infectious uh, in, uh, person around, so the infection rate would spread. Now, as regards the fear versus being alert versus pressing the panic button. When you press the panic button, it leads to some knee-jerk reactions and also to probably uh, some of the actions which are undesirable. What at this time we need is to be fearful because when you're fearful, you're on guard, you're alert, and therefore you take preventive measures. So said that we, whatever information has come now, it does see that it is definitely more transmissible and more infections. And the WHO also has said that the reinfection rate means that those who had COVID infection in the past or who are vaccinated also are getting these infections with Omicron. And there is also information from whatever the cases that have been seen so far, it has been mild. And the spectrum seems to be a little different in the sense that they did not record a loss of smell and loss of taste, a more milder spectrum without the involvement grossly of lungs or oxygen lack or hospitalizations and certainly no deaths. That's encouraging. Said that though, we know that the infections have not really gone on to involve very elderly, immune compromised. Those individuals, even a minor infection can lead to a major problem. So giving it a blanket statement that this would always remain mild, we don't know. So we yet to see. That's number one to fear. Number two is that whenever the infection spread varies of mutations, and when you have more mutations, we do not know how the virus again behaves, mutates, and may lead to another variant. So that's another concern. So therefore, we have to be fear of precautions that this infection should not spread. Right. And, you know, ma'am, since you mentioned, of course, the third case as well. Now, this third case is a man who had traveled to Zimbabwe. Uh, the second case, of course, um, is someone who's had a travel history from South Africa. I specifically talk about the doctor who had the interpretation we would like to understand, ma'am, as Indians, because there is, of course, a growing fear. Uh, as far as this variant is concerned, is it possible uh, that it perhaps already um, is in India uh, at the, and that this mutation is not just imported anymore, it could have already spread? That's a concern that some of the virologists have raised. We do have some information which has come from some virologists who say that this probably is already existent. And, you know, all these kind of viral flu-like features that are sometimes seen. And in this weather and this season, you have that very commonly seen that when supposing these people are tested, then maybe, you know, this thing is there. But that's that's the, uh, you know, uh, the kind of uh, what you say is their thoughts on this. 
that has come from certain virologists. But as the we go by what the World Health Organization is saying and what our ministry is saying, and so we are going strictly by science. So that part is not yet proven. Said that though, you know this. Uh, there is some amount of uh, also trepidation that yes, when you are exposed to someone who's also traveled, say in a congregation, in a conference, in meeting grounds, there are people coming from all parts, and you know you do not know each and every person's travel history in the last fifteen days or a month, and since the regulations and also the kind of you know what 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 you call as um, limitations in our activities has sort of eased. Over the last couple of months, so there is more travel, there is more movement. So it's possible that the exposure may also have happened to another person who has had a travel history, and you know that a large number of people also remained asymptomatic when they tested out some contacts, which has come out in South Africa and other countries. A lot of contacts did not have mount any symptoms, which is true for most of the viral infections. So that may also be a possibility. Of course, there are people who are also negating it, saying that that's not possible since the exposure was just a couple of hours. So I think it is too premature to make an assumption and be. there but it really does not really lead to useful conclusions here at this point of time meenakshi because as aware and responsible citizens you me should actually now stick to the precautions of being covid appropriate in our behavior wear the mask and get vaccinated like you know speaking specifically of vaccination ma'am what do we know about uh, the variant and how it behaves vis-a-vis vaccination does it uh, have the capability to override the immunity provided by vaccination and also uh, i'd like to ask you this in correlation to the immunosuppress the elderly uh, since of course as the head of the neuro department of aims you very closely work with uh, many True, patients like that so that concern that cohort of group of people who are elderly and who are immune compromised for whatever reason they are on the immune suppressants they are on certain disorders they are cancer patients or chemotherapy they are taking steroids they are you know uncontrolled diabetics what have you or transplant patients whoever they are now this cohort remains a cohort of concern because mild infections become major yeah. mild infections become severe and lead to severe consequences in this cohort so they are always always a concern now coming to vaccines mm-hmm. now i don't think there is uh, any any kind of a doubt that vaccination will prevent the severity of an infection that stays whether it prevents being infected of course is probably not 100% certainly it may help but it is not going to 100% prevent from getting an infection said that there is also information which came from again world health organization which said that there is an immune you know evasive property immune escape property of omicron they may be there there are question that's the reason they said variant of concern mm-hmm. therefore i would believe that getting vaccinated would be of absolute of paramount importance it's, it is definitely going to help you in severity that's one okay. whether our vaccines are going to help in preventing omicron we don't know the we still need to have that progress to understand and get that literature and information and there are people working on it. Hmm. then the second thing is now this cohort whether it is omicron whether it is delta whether it is any infection this cohort of elderly and immune compromised are a precious cohort who definitely need more protection given what's happening in the world around us given that we are detecting cases in india as well do you think that that has expedited the need to give booster shots to a certain population at least at the earliest i believe this is being definitely definitely conclusively being drawn out and i've also seen on the news that the ministry is also strongly contemplating that and the the task force the science bodies are coming to a conclusion very soon on having this and there are of course parts of the world who are already going ahead and doing that yes i think a booster dose would be required for the individuals who would be at risk of developing a severe infection but the question right now is that we have a new study which has come out south african experts and medical experts have also verified that a large number of children under 5 have needed hospitalization because of this new variant are children at a bigger risk this time should we look at vaccinating them as well at the earliest 
Yes, so that is of concern. Uh, it is true that the South African uh, Medical Association has come out with this, that they do have, uh, you know, a rise in children under the age of five years with this variant infection. Although, again, they did not see that the infectious severity as such has been very extensive in that, but certainly it's of concern when you have a large group of very young uh, babies coming in with this infection. It is of concern because it does not happen in at least the first wave and the second wave and certainly not in our part of the world. So it is concerning and hence I think there will be a way forward even for these children. But then the I, I, do, I did hear that even the vaccinations for children are going to come on board probably even much earlier than what was earlier thought of. But again, as we speak, Meenakshi, since this kind of the rapidity with which the information is also coming in from different parts of the world and our understanding and getting more robust evidence on which we can make decisions is also getting much higher and much more what I would say solid. I think we should not have, again, as I said, when you press a panic button, there would be knee-jerk reactions. And that is, I think, that is what is being avoided by all responsible task forces in science and even the implement, you know, implementation agencies. Right. So uh, I'm sure, Meenakshi, we will have a way forward very soon. Right. And, you know, my last question to you, since you spoke of a way forward, you, you said we shouldn't press the panic button as, you know, you sign on. What would be the word of advice you'd like to give people considering? Um, it's the beginning of December and end of December is really when the peak tourist festive season also begins. Any word of advice you'd like to give people? Don't panic, but perhaps masking vaccination paramount? Minakshi, you said it absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So certainly non-prioritized activities, please don't take up. If you can avoid a non-prioritized activity, I mean a gathering where it is purely of pleasure, getaways, gathering where it is not really required, you can make do with a less number of people or equally, you know, postpone it for a few months, do that. Absolute essential travel is a must. The essentiality depends upon your own survival, your profession, but unnecessary travel, don't do it. We can definitely virtually meet and get going. Number three, please mask up. Never have a mask down or unmask and go about as though the whole thing is, you know, don't say all is well and don't go around saying there is no mask needed. Mask is absolutely essential. Your COVID appropriate behavior is a first arsenal. Get both shots of vaccines. And whenever there is a booster dose, which is, which is you know, given, which is given to the cohort where it is ordained for, please come forward and take mm -hmm. it. So get vaccinated, get COVID appropriate behavior, be responsible citizens. You can do it. Well, absolutely we be responsible, wear your mask, get vaccinated, do not panic. Uh, of course, as far as uh, our experts go, that's the word of advice which has uh, come almost through the morning in all the interviews I have taken. I hope uh, it does help the viewers and I hope some of you will actually follow the protocols even when the peak of festive season comes thank you ma'am thank you for joining us with your views on the same for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon